Got him. <laughs> oh man, that one almost eluded us. I don't know if there's a more beautiful sight than that right there. Clearwater walleyes. A real finessey fishing today. Beautiful Mille Lacs Lake walleye. Feels good to break it down, catch an absolute pile of fish out here. Oh man, first things first, I cannot describe to you guys how in love I am with this boat. It's been roughly three months. Is that correct? April, May, June? April, May. I guess it's been about two months that I've had the Warrior 2090 Big Tiller. Absolutely in love with it, even more than I was when I first got it. As a guy who likes to fish, and travel a lot of walleye water, big water, small water, rivers, little rivers, big rivers, whatever it might be. This is the ultimate boat, hands down. So I wanna get that off my chest right away. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for that update, but where are we, what are we doing today? Today, believe it or not, we're on a lake, which I have not filmed on in two years that I used to film on all the time. We're on Mille Lacs Lake in Minnesota. And it's only like a few hours from my house. Used to film here a bunch. Haven't filmed here in a while. There's kind of all these reports of like, uh, the bite's kind of, you know, whatever, whatever. You can always catch fish, but um, it's not the glory days. Well, that, uh, it, I don't know if this year's just different or what's going on, but fishing is outstanding right now. Um, at least it was yesterday. Yesterday was the first day I've been here in a boat in a couple of years. And it was about 90 degrees. The bugs were insane and it was flat calm for most of the day. I probably caught 45 fish just kind of like running around doing some different stuff, filming some hummingbird stuff and whatnot. And today of course we wake up, it's 47 degrees out, we have a heavy east wind. <laughs> and a lot of what I was doing was fishing on the west end and like running the live and things like that and trying to film the live. And we could go to the West End and catch fish. We're just not going to get that live footage in which I want for this video. So, um, but who knows? Maybe that doesn't even matter to you guys. But we're just going to, what are we doing here? We got everything rolling. We got to move a few cameras around or whatnot. But basically, I'm going to totally scrap what I was doing yesterday. Or at least the locations in which I was fishing yesterday. And I'm just going to run a shallow water rock pattern and we're gonna get the live down right away now this is the tki ink mount as i say in a lot of the videos I, that i do but let's do a quick little talk on live here i know that camera is not even facing me because we got to mess with that camera and turn it around to face it up here but let's do a little discussion about live imaging real quick now anytime i do a video with live i get the same 10 comments I don't know if it's from the same 10 people or different people. They range from, oh, that's not even fishing, to, oh, it must be nice, to, you know, comments of that nature, right? And here's what I'll say about that for the probably the final time you'll ever hear me say this on a YouTube channel. Technology does not move backwards, right? Can we all agree on that? They're not going to come out with a worse iPhone next year. And nobody with an iPhone 6 says to the person with the iPhone 13, oh man, you know, that's cheating. It's too easy to make a phone call now. Come on, right? But where do we draw the line? Because obviously live is what's the new thing now. And there'll be a new thing that comes out after that, right? So do we draw the line at the next thing? Do we draw the line at this thing? Do we all go back from fishing from shore with a stick and a string and a worm? <clears throat> you tell me. But my job is to showcase technology, showcase equipment, showcase the things I like to do to catch fish. So that'll be the last you guys ever hear me say anything about this ever on a YouTube channel. Let's get this turned around real quick. And essentially what I'm gonna be doing today is standing up here in the front of the boat running some good shallow water rock spots in which i fished in the past and hopefully sharp shooting some walleyes now we're going to start out low and slow with something like a drop shot and go from there now pretty much best combination you can fish for a lot of places you're going to go in june leech right that's a setup elliot identity 74 rig and jig brand new rod phenomenal stick for doing this type of presentation 
And we're gonna stand up here. Hopefully this cloud cover kind of stays because whenever I have cloud cover, I can get substantially better uh, um, mega live footage for anybody who's interested in that. If you don't interested in this, just close your left eye because I'll probably put the mega live footage like somewhere here in the screen or maybe close your right eye if I put it over here. And then you can just watch essentially half of the screen or maybe you can put a post-it note over half of your phone if you hate live content. But this is the kind of deal here. We're gonna run around 13 to like maybe six, seven feet of water and just look for some of these really shallow walleyes. Now, a lot of times these can be some big fish too, which is kind of exciting. So um, we'll see what happens. A couple of them. And we hope to see their reaction kind of change here a little bit. That one's got it right away. Smally or walleye? Well, that was about how it's supposed to work. It's feeling like a big walleye, to be honest with you. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. There's still another one out there. Oh, it is a bass. Big old giant smally. Well, when you're fishing up here on the shallow rocks, you're going to get some of these smallies just coming off the spawn. <laughs> I don't know if they're all going to be... Definitely not all gonna be smallies, but geez, dude. Look at that thing go. <laughs> That's about as cool as it gets right there, huh? Normally I'm not big on the old, let's catch a bunch of bass, but this lake's obviously a renowned bass fishery now. And that's a really good one right there. And there's just so many fish like this out here, man. Obviously some of these guys are probably done spawning now. I'll give you a look at this guy. Big fatty. He's already off, I think, too. No, it's still barely hooked. It's barely hooked here. And they will, of course, eat the drop shot. <laughs> Big old smallies, man. Ton of these guys in Mille Lacs. But we'll get him back. Pitch back out, see if we can't get the correct species. Terrible cast. Take a mulligan on that one. Got it. Got him. Got a feeling we're on the basses now, boys. <laughs> oh, no, it is a walleye. <laughs> right in with the bass. Felt like a smallmouth at first. Real nice walleye too, man. Real healthy, perky one. Schooled up right with the smallies. Well, there we go. Walleye. Smallmouth, back-to-back -back cast. One of the many things that make this just such a cool destination, man, is that both these fish live out here in big-time numbers. There we go. Just a butterball, man, not a long one. Super fat and perky. We'll definitely get bigger ones than that today. At least we got a pile bigger than this yesterday, but I'll let that guy go. Living up here on the shallow rocks. Sharp shooting off the Mega Live. Nice walleye and a smallmouth, back to back. Just right on the bottom out there. Got him. <laughs> oh man, that one almost eluded us. Down there on the bottom, just 
way out at the end of the screen. Made kind of a nice long cast, and this is going to be a nice walleye for sure. Come here, bud. Oh, yeah, look at that guy. Look at that guy, man. Well, we're doing it in the old cold front, man. Let me tell you this. It has been scorchingly hot for two weeks now. I got every layer I brought with me, and I wish I had more. <laughs> it's 47 degrees, super high pressure, and a big east wind to start the day. And it is chilly. That is for sure. I wish I had one more flannel shirt in my truck I wish I would have brought. But as I was leaving the boat ramp, I was like, there's no way, right? But it is that cold. I was, I was fishing yesterday in water temps that were like 69. Oh, man, we got the line through the zipper going on. 69, 70 degrees. 57 up here. That's not good. It's not a good sign. Now, obviously, on the west side of the lake, it's going to be a little bit warmer. Nice. He's already off in the bag. But that is what we're looking for. We're making the most of it. Maybe we'll do a nice piece kind of on how I like to rig these drop shots for walleye fishing. There's not a ton to it, but we always get questions whenever we do a bunch of these drop shot videos. There we go. Nice fish right there. A little thinner than the last one I got, but we're getting it done, man. Big smallies, couple nice walleyes. Can't complain for early in the morning. Let's let that guy go. I swear what's keeping me from running all the way to the other side is I'm so cold. <laughs> I don't want to drive all the way over there right now. See you later, girl. Back down to the shallow rock she goes. All right, well, as happens when you're fishing a bunch of rock, I snaked up, broke off. But good opportunity to kind of tie a drop shot together as we get asked a lot of questions on this. Uh, we start out with some 10-pound suffix advanced fluorocarbon double uni knot into my main line which is a 10 pound suffix 131 braid if you're not sure how to tie a uni knot essentially you double the line back over itself wrap it five to seven times and then you do the same with the other end look it up as you will probably not be able to uh, do it just based off me saying those words but get it wet when you cinch it tight and all we're going to do is trim those two tags real quick. I like, I love this suffix 131 braid. It's very thin and it's like a very soft, supple braid. It's not like coarse like a lot of the other braids. Now we're fishing really clear water, so I'm going to tie like a six foot. I'm going to get like a six or seven foot length of this fluorocarbon, right? So now the next thing we're going to do, get our hook. I really like these like finesse wide gap hooks for doing this. Kind of the only downfall of them is they don't hold like live bait super well because that barb's a little bit smaller, but uh, they do plenty good enough job. You know, we're not casting a million times. We're just kind of casting when we see fish for the most part. Obviously thread that through. Now the important part, this is very important. Thread it through like this with a hook facing up through the top of the eye. And then I'll thread it through there again give myself probably a foot and a half of tag on there or two feet of tag on there and then i'll just wrap that line essentially wrapping it five six seven times around the main line so we tie that on i think this is called like a, just a uh, improved clinch knot or something like that but super simple to tie now essentially we're just going to run that back through the end here right back through the loop we made in the line now, the important part is when you cinch this up, I like to kind of grab one end of my teeth. And what I'll do is hold the hook towards the straight up the way you want it to kind of set into the line. And I'm going to jam that knot down real tight. You can see how that hook's sitting very straight up right now. That's what I want. Just like that right there. So now my hook sits on the line as I'm working that leech like that you don't want this to be upside down this part is very important it's also going to help you landing more fish when you set the hook now take my 3 16 ounce weight just one of these regular kind of small little rubber weights you can get the fancy drop shot weights if you want as well now generally i'll tie this knot a lot worse than i'll tie my other knot because i want that to break off first if that gets stuck in a rock now i've got obviously my main line going this way Drop shot weight down here and that hook sitting on there. Nice and up and down like that. That is what I want right there out of it.
Should be pretty close to that one. Oh yeah, just felt thump. Got him. <laughs> Dude, I literally just caught that last walleye. Now we got another one on. Bass? <laughs> Either way, we're having some fun. That is for sure. Now it's feeling more walleye-esque. Oh yeah, good walleye. Good walleye. <laughs> oh man, I love it. Camera's been rolling for one minute, four seconds since the last walleye. There we go, man. That is the deal. I'll get that guy popped off. I'll get him in the bag, popped off, and back in the water. We're having a good time. And a lot of times when you talk about combat and cold fronts, and I always draw this analogy, when fishing's good, you can get away with more, right? Meaning the fish will chase your bait farther. You don't have to be as precise. You can fish water a lot faster because of that same exact thing. When you have, you could fish baits that are more aggressive when the bite's good, because they cover more water, the fish are more apt to run. When you're fishing a cold front, all of those things are taken away. You gotta be closer to the fish. You gotta fish something a little bit slower a lot of times. You gotta do a lot of those smaller things that keep a bait in a fish's face and are a little bit more enticing. A drop shot is one of those presentations that works well under these conditions. The live is obviously what's helped me put the bait right in front of the fish's face. So all of those things together are kind of kind of the deal under this type of day, I would say. Now, could get to a situation where it warms up in the afternoon and you know all is all is right in the world again and we can go back to doing other things, but a lot of times under these conditions, it's slow get right in the fish's face, something that'll hang there a little bit. And that can kind of be the deal. They look like rocks. Those are definitely fish up off the bottom. Got him. <laughs> there we go. Just two marks. Obviously, the shallower you get, gosh, these things are angry up here, man. Obviously, the shallower you get, those fish are a little bit more prone to sit tighter to the bottom. But still, you know, in fishing a lot of this six, seven, eight feet of water, still being able to see those fish, and they are just angry when you get them up here shallow, man. I don't know if there's a more beautiful sight than that right there. Clear water walleyes. Real finessey fishing today. But hey man, we'll take everyone that wants to bite. That is for sure. It was a little concerning this morning when I woke up, looked outside, and the trees were just whipping every which direction. It's calmed down a little bit. We could probably definitely get away with filming in the other side of the lake now where we were fishing yesterday, but kinda having fun over here. Kinda having fun. Exploring some new water. That little leech pinned right in the side. Now leeches have been kind of tough to get this year, I feel like a lot of years. So I have been mixing in some artificials too. Beautiful walleye right there, man. Doesn't get any better. Figured would give you guys one good sun angle here. <laughs> Fishing the east bank, looking straight east in an east wind. And uh, it always works better when you got the lighting in your face, but super nice healthy walleyes, man. We'll let that guy go. Fun little morning for sure. As long as I'm sitting back here, I just looked over here. You guys can see all my graphs are on standby mode. Good tip if you have a ton of transducers on your boat like I do. Two, if you're just gonna fish off Mega Live or any forward facing, just put them on standby. With the Hummingbirds, all you do is hit the power button. You can go scroll up one and then hit standby. 
and then it'll turn off all my graphs from pinging so that I'm not getting interference from a bunch of different graphs. Helps you out a ton to get a much clearer picture. Um, especially if you're just gonna, if you're a tiller guy like me and you're just gonna run that transducer out the back, just turn off your other deucers, your, either your high speed or especially your side imaging, and then you'll get a clearer picture off that. It doesn't matter quite as much in the front, but it's like right now I wanted to pitch backwards and I had all my other transducers back here on, I'd get some natural interference, especially because I'm fishing a lot of rock. It doesn't happen as much pinging in like a soft bottom situation. But if you're fishing really hard bottom, especially in shallow water, just turn your other transducers off and that's going to help you out a lot to get a lot better picture out of your Mega Live. Got him. It's feeling real good. It's feeling real good. Man, some of them, these fish just get so pressed into the bottom when you're up here this shallow. But you could probably see those fish on the live. There was like three of them there just kind of all sitting together. Oh man, super nice one. Super nice walleye right there. <laughs> Dude, how does it get any better, man? Catching big walleyes. I shouldn't say big walleye, I should say very nice walleyes. In some skinny water, in the cold front. Come here, bud. There we go. I love it. I absolutely love it. And the, it, for some reason it feels weirdly more rewarding than just to go to the spot where I caught like 35, 40 fish yesterday and just replicate. It feels a little bit more rewarding. So just to kind of break down a little bit different zone. Most of my fishing yesterday was like 15, 18 feet of water. We're obviously shallower than all that today. You can see on the graph right now, I think we're in like six or seven feet. Pretty shallow, but the fishing is pretty good. And editing, it's gonna drive me absolutely crazy if all my shots <laughs> are with the sun facing the wrong way. But there we go, dude. Beautiful Mille Lacs Lake walleye. Feels good to break it down, catch an absolute pile of fish out here. I'm having a blast and this is first stop of like a week and a half on the road from here heading west doing seminars fishing filming youtube eating terrible gas station food it's all kind of part of the deal but let's let that guy go man perfect fish nice and stocky there's a lot of those kind of fat and sassy seems like about 18 19 to like 22 23 inch fish in the system which is definitely a good sign all right I think that might do it for today's video. I don't really know what else there is to do. Of course, we could catch more fish, but I think we might just wrap it up there and start moving around spot to spot out here in Mille Lacs and just kind of scope it out. I got kind of another half day here before I'm on to the next location to start doing some seminars and things like that in Fargo, Grand Forks, and Bismarck. So um, I don't think by the time I post this, there'll be any seats left, but I'll, I'll link everything I have down below anyways in case you guys want to attend one of those um, the Fargo one might already be sold out or might have already happened by this point in time. Grand Forks, Bismarck, there's a Billings, Montana one coming up. There's a Sioux Falls, South Dakota one coming up. So stay tuned for all those. But uh, make sure you guys, if you guys are, want to come out and fish on Mille Lacs, obviously location's huge, getting around the right kind of spots that got fish on them. I did a lot of driving around yesterday and up uploaded that piece to the walleye now app kind of on Mille Lacs locational breakdowns for this time of year. So if that's something that intrigues you guys, jump over to the walleye now app, click let's go fishing at the bottom of the page, click on early summer natural lake under the destinations, you'll see Mille Lacs right there. So um, that's that. I don't really know what else there is to say. Fun morning, drop shotting, pitching off the mega live in the front of the boat. Um, obviously not every video is just going to be me standing there fishing off the, the live but it is a very powerful tool in certain situations when used correctly and today was one of those instances obviously we can catch fish um, obviously there's better tools for different situations right but in this specific deal the mega live was the deal so appreciate you guys watching this one um, we're gonna drive around enjoy a beautiful day out here in Mille Lacs now it's finally warmed up and we'll see you guys down the road on the next video if you're not yet please subscribe stay tuned for more content we'll see you next time